But what if I told you that the future already exists because the world's smartest people are busy dreaming it and building it? The future. Back in Japan, cybertech is the wave of the present as much as the future. Dr. Adrian Chiok is working on a pocket-sized approach to communication, the social robot. It's a clever, child-friendly technology. Nowadays, kids are exploring cyberspace before they can tie their shoes. It's a great way for them to connect and learn, but it also means they need to be protected. Social robots offer a safe way for kids to communicate in life and online. Well, we live in the age of communication, yeah. and now younger and younger children are using things such as social networks, Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter, etc. So, but parents are really worried when even young children start to use social networks. So what we want to do is merge robotics with social networks to create a new kind of social networking robot for children. So this is a robot? This is a robot. It's We're in Japan, we've got robots. And it's, and Check. It, that's right. And it's, it's small and it's cute so that children can easily carry it with them anywhere okay. they go. This little pink apple is called Petamo. Here's how it works. The toy is actually a small handheld computer with Wi-Fi and RFID radios. The screen can project icons or display simple games. When two Petamos kiss, their RFID radios exchange details. A Wi-Fi radio then notifies a grown-up's computer that their kids' Petamos made a new friend. Just for fun, the pink pals are also haptic, vibrating when you squeeze them. Instead of meeting unknown avatars online, you network with people in the real world, swap information, and voila! Your 3D avatars can now play together in the world of a popular Japanese tradition called kawaii, or cute culture. Their new friendship, sealed with a kiss. These work outside, right? <laughs> they work outside. Children in the park or at school, right. in the classroom, on the bus, anywhere at all they can work together. Okay. And you can make friends wherever you are. The ingenious thing is that these social robots reverse the order in which we meet our online friends. You get to see who they are in real life before you allow them into your network. So let's say we just became friends. We had a great time. On the, we're just running around just the running track, around. throwing yes. things in the background, throwing yes. the discus around. Right. And uh, so I want to mark our friendship and preserve it through exactly. the social network. Exactly. And, and then also, like, I know who you are. Right. I know you're like, like not, uh, not a bad person. Right. And I, my parents will feel safe. And so, so will we mine. Can, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> we can do background checks on one another. Yes. <laughs> and our parents can do background checks. <laughs> exactly. And then sanction this friendship right. with a and robotic then, And then kiss. we just, yes, that's right. We kiss each other on the robots. And then we become friends. And so even, even when not in front of the computers, yeah. it's the signals being sent okay. through the internet into our virtual characters in the virtual world. All right, so we've gone from Facebook and MySpace, Twitter, Bebo, and now you get social robots. Yes, that's right. Uh, on the edge of doable. Right, <laughs> on the edge of doability. Adrian and his researchers are still perfecting these little pink prototypes. In five years, they could be as ubiquitous as the iPod Shuffle. I made two very cute little robots kiss each other. What social robots do is take our real-world connections, mark them, enhance them, and extend them into the virtual world. The future.